Hallelujah. Damage control part four. How to protect you from you. Damage control part four. How to protect you from you. Y'all praying with me, right? Hallelujah. So, welcome to the control room once again. For those who don't know, we're calling this place the control room. It is this place, God bless you, man. It is this place where we come to deal with our damage. It is this place that we come and deal with those things, those issues, those circumstances. All of that stuff, my brothers and sisters, that have found its way to our life. Today is the day. I'm declaring where you watch me on Facebook, YouTube, the New Church STL, or in the house. I'm declaring that you're about to get healed today. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. I'm declaring. Come on, come on, come on, come on. In the house. Let them hear you. I'm declaring that you're about to get healed today. And if you believe you're about to get healed, I dare you to just to clap your hands for Jesus all over the building. Amen. Do me a favor. If you're watching us on social media, put in the chat. I'm, a, I'm, I'm getting ready to be healed today. I'm getting ready to be healed today. So we in the control room. And my brothers and sisters, this is part four. And we understand that this series is all about self-awareness. Self-awareness. And what is the definition of self-awareness? Come on. Self-awareness, my brothers and sisters, what? How we view ourselves alongside how others view us. How we what? Alongside how others Say it again. How we what? Alongside how others Yeah, one more time for good measure. How we alongside how others Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, it is important to understand that we all have a view of ourselves. And that's good. But self-awareness is not only about how you view yourself, but self-awareness is also how people view you. And we're living in a society where we've become so woke that we disregard the feelings of the community. We disregard the feelings of individuals. We disregard the feelings of people. But my brothers and sisters, if we're going to be all God has called us to be, we can't only just get along with ourselves, we got to get along with other people. Somebody shout hallelujah. We got to get along with other people. And my brothers and sisters, if you got a real friend in your life, that real friend will tell you, will tell you when you are tripping. Amen. If you got a friend that's always praising you and never challenging you, then you need to check your circle. If you are the smartest person in your circle, you in the wrong circle, your circle is pretty dumb because there ought to be somebody in your circle who's smarter than you, who's more intellectual than you, who you can look up to, who you can draw from, and who you can pull from. But here's the problem. The reason why we can't grow because we always want to be the best at everything. We always want to be the best at everything. God has not called you to be the best at everything, but God has called you to be the best in yourself. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so this is all about becoming our best self. If you become your best self in this season, in this moment, and begin to walk and begin to matriculate in your best self in this season, this moment, you have accomplished purpose. Oh, y'all miss it up in here. See, we have made purpose so complicated, so perplexed. Uh, we have people who have written books on purpose and made millions of dollars. Y'all know y'all went about the books. You took the, you took the assessment. You did what he said is going to do. And you still don't know why you exist. You still don't know why you are here. Because purpose is simply this. Purpose is becoming my best the way God designed me to be. And I'm, I'm here to tell somebody today, the honest reality is that you are here, but you're not your best self. You're watching me, but you're not your best self. You can do better. Do me a favor, point to yourself and say, I can do better, I can do better. Come on, come on, tell yourself, I can do better, I can do better. On, on Facebook, on YouTube, put that in the, in the comment section. I can do better, I can do better. See, some of you all can't even say it with energy because you don't 
God has better for you. God cannot move you into a place of better if you don't believe that there's better for you. Now, if you are cool with where you are, this one ain't for you. But if there's anybody in the house today that can say, God, I want more. I want to accomplish more. I want to succeed in some areas that I've been failing at. God, I want to see myself increase. Lord, I want to see my territory enlarged. Is there anybody in here who can say, Lord, I just want better? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 2020 has caused all hell. 2020 is coming and throwing haymakers. No, it ain't, it ain't jabbing. It's throwing haymakers. How many people know 20? Bam, bam. It's throwing haymakers and the devil want to knock you out. But just before the devil get to the count of 10, God said, I'm about to put you back up, pick you back up again. Do me a favor. I'll, I'm the comeback kid. Come on, say I'm the comeback kid. Come on, say it like you mean it. I'm the comeback kid. Yeah, I'm the comeback kid. God is setting you up for a comeback. Greater is the God that is in you than the enemy that is in the world. God is setting you up for a comeback. Everything that you've lost, I believe God is going to restore it to you, not equally, but he's going to double in some instances and triple in some instances. Some of you all don't even know how to receive a prophetic word. If the man of God told me that God is going to give me double for my trouble, triple for my trouble, I'll just go to praising God even if I don't see it yet. Because God want to know, do you believe it even if you can't see it? Is there anybody here say, I can't see it, but I believe it. I believe it. I believe my finance is going to increase. I believe my employment opportunity is going to expand. I believe that the financial aid is going to come. I believe that whatever God has for me is about to come. I didn't go through all this hell in 2020 for nothing. I didn't take all these haymakers for nothing. I didn't go through everything that I went through for nothing. God's got something greater for me. And he's trying to see, can I just hold on? Bump your, don't bump your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, just hold on. Just hold on. Come on, tell him, just hold on. Oh, my God. Y'all ain't loud enough in here for me. Is there anybody that say, I'm holding on? I'm holding on. I may be holding on by a thread, but I'm holding on. I may be holding on by an inch, but I'm holding on. What did the woman at the well say? If I can just touch. If I can just touch, I don't need to hug them. I just need to touch. God said, all you need is a touch. So I can become better, so I can be aware, so I can know how I looked at, how I look at myself and how others look at me. And so we ain't dealing with the why because some of you all been lying to yourself. Mm -hmm. You've been making excuses for your hiccups. You've been making excuses for your lack of daisicalness. Okay, you've been making excuses for your laziness. You, you have concocted in your head that you are doing stuff that you know you're not doing. Mm -hmm. And that's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Look at your neighbor and say, are you insane? <laughs> Come on, say, are you insane? So some of y'all, yeah, I'm a little cray cray. I'm a, I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm, I'm one floor short of the top one, amen. I'm one marble short of the, of the jaw. I'm one card short of the deck, but I still love God. Uh, so, so I'm aware I'm not talking about the why because I don't want your bias to kick in if we're going to be a self aware I want to tell you what you need to do and so week one we did a great introductory week two we began with the list of what's we said you need to have some pain identity y'all remember that I can't go relitigate that sermon but we wanted to touch those painful spots those ailing spots emotional spots that are hindering us Last week, my brothers and sisters, we went on from pain identity. We talked about pressure points. Yeah, so y'all caught it online. We talked about those areas that when touched creates discomfort in our life. And I went through the different categories in which those areas that come to destroy us. And so we have pain identity. That's the first word that we need to associate ourselves with in terms of being self-aware. We have pressure points. But today, I want to give you the third one. I want to talk about perspective. Somebody shout out perspective. Come on, somebody put that in the chat. Perspective, 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 perspective. What is perspective? Perspective is, my brothers and sisters, it is my attitude or point of view towards what? And or what? 
Come on, come on, class. Y'all the class. Y'all gotta let the audience know on the social media that y'all listen to me, that y'all ignore me. Here we go. Perspective, what it is? My attitude or point of view towards something and or someone. My attitude. My attitude towards something or someone equals my perspective. I know what your perspective is based off your point of view that you articulate, based off your attitude that you, my brothers and sisters, demonstrate. That lets me know what your perspective is. And the problem is we're not aware of how nasty our attitudes are. You think nobody like you because they hating on you? Don't nobody like you because you're not likable. Oh, come on up in here. Somebody don't, they don't like you because you're not like a, well, I can love myself. But my brothers and sisters, somebody else ought to love you too. Yeah, we need to get up out of there. I can just love myself and everything going to be all right. No, you need to fix your attitude. You need to fix your perspective, but I cannot fix my, oh God, I feel like preaching here. I can't fix my attitude and I can't fix my perspective if not, I'm not aware of what my perspective is. And make no mistake about it, I want to help you out. I, I ain't going to let nobody run today. You know, sometimes we preach and we say, oh, that one wasn't for me, but pastor showed enough good. Ain't no running today, this one for you. Yeah, yeah. Everybody in here has a perspective. Everybody that's watching me has a perspective and I want to get to the crux of it. I want to dig into it. I want to touch you today. I'm going to hurt you, but I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you, but I'm going to hurt you because I need to talk about your point of views. I need to talk about your attitude. I need to talk about You, you, y'all, y'all like how I did that? Your perspective. That, that's a preacher tag. You see how y'all drew into me? Yeah, yeah. Your perspective. And my brothers and sisters, there's different dimensions to our perspective. Can I give them to you? I know how much time I got? I got about 20 minutes, 21 minutes. Somebody shout out product. My perspective has a product. My perspective is a product of something. Y'all got it? First element of perspective is product. What is it a a product of? My perspective is a product of the context in which I assimilate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My perspective is what? A product of the context in which I assimilate. Bump your name and say, what, don't bump, but look at him and say, whatever he said, I believe it. It is the product. It produces. It is the result. So my perspective is the result of the producing of the context in which I assimilate. In other words, what I allow in my space. Y'all remember that saying that association brings about what? Assimilation. And so what I choose to assimilate or ingratiate myself with creates and forms my perspective. What are you talking about, Pastor? All I'm trying to tell you, my brothers and sisters, is that your perspective or your context, rather, your context is informed with two different dimensions. Who's in my context? First of all, my context is the set of ideas that I've allowed in my mind. The set of ideals. Ideals is my context. And so my brothers and sisters, the problem is the reason why we're so in balance because we're listening to different sources. Some of us get our religion from Facebook. Some of us get our religion from social movements that, oh my God. Some of us, oh my God. Some of us get our religion from news stations. Some of us get our religion from newspapers. Some of us get our religion from lurking on Instagram. And so now you're so imbalanced because in one part of your mind, you're quoting something for Instagram. You don't even know if it's true. In another part of your mind, you're quoting something for Facebook. In another part of your mind, you got the black fist up because you went and marched for a day. Come on, happy heart. Oh, my God. Oh, woo, woo, woo. 
In another part of your mind, you, you, you talking about politics because you don't really understand it, but because you've been watching it. But nowhere in your mind are you lifting up the name of Jesus. Yeah, we, oh, we save, but don't nobody know we save. Oh, we love the Lord, but don't nobody know love. Oh, we love the Lord. Oh, we love the Lord, but we ain't committed and submitted. We ain't committed and submitted. Why? Because our context of ideas are too wavering. Woo! Before you read a book, do you pray to God and say, God, is this the material I should be reading in this season? Because some stuff that I read can be poison to my destiny if I read it out of place. Oh, my God. Preach up in here today. And see, that's why I can look at what you post on social media and understand your perspective because what you post is really what's in your mind. And so a man thinking in their heart, so is the, and I never understood why people pray to God on social media. Come on, come on. Uh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I'm declaring. I ain't talking to social, don't you know that the devil is on social media? You don't want the enemy in on what you believe in God. Oh, because you know, for everything that you're praying for, the enemy is praying and working against you. And so you are inviting trouble. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I'm preaching better than y'all responding up in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. My ideas. It informs my context. But not only ideas, individuals. It's a part of my context. My ideas is the what? Ooh, I'm preaching. But my brothers and sisters, individuals is the who. Can I ask you a simple question? And I think I'm gonna end this thing early. No, I'm not. Can I ask you a simple question? Look at y'all, y'all got excited. I'm gonna preach as long as I want to up in here. Here's the question, who have you been listening to? Because every person you listen to, you've literally gave it, given them authority to feed your mind. And some people cannot cook. And that's why you have mental food poisoning because the chef that has been imparted in you, oh my God, has been poisoning you and you don't realize that you go going wayward because you've allowed yourself to hang around folk, oh my God, that are not coming to lift you up, but they're coming to tear you down. They're not coming to be a armor bear, but they're coming to be a part. I don't care if they got your last name, your blood. I don't care who they are. There are some people that don't have no business speaking over your life. Yeah, I don't care who you are. You don't have the permission just to speak over my life. There are some people who spoke something in my life and I'm rebuking it as they speak it. In the name of Jesus, I cast that down to the pits of hell. Every thought, every imagination, every wimp, every enemy, every witch, but you can't do it if you ain't got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will let you know when to walk right, when to talk right, when to act right, when to live right, how to love right, how to serve right. There's too many people saved without the Holy Ghost. Oh my. I'm talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about the Holy Ghost that come with the Trinity. I'm taught to be ingratiated in the Holy Spirit. To be baptized. To be submerged. Some of y'all need to go get another dip. My God. We do not consult the Holy Spirit because we don't live by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says those who are the Spirit, are of the Spirit, live by the Spirit. But those who are of the flesh, live by the flesh. Can I ask you a question? What's dominating the world, flesh or spirit? Ooh, I'm messing up in here, y'all. I'm messing up in here, y'all. I'm going to keep messing up. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. See, if you don't feel the Holy Ghost yet, you ain't baptized. Woo, because the Holy Ghost, if it's on me, it ought to be on you. And when the Holy Ghost is on you, you ought to lift your hands. You ought to say, Lord, I thank you. Even if I'm hurting you, you ought to give God some praise all over the building. And if it had not been for the Lord, woo, on my side. Oh, I feel him in this place today. 
I feel him in his place today. He's all over me. In my head and my feet, he's all over me. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. The Holy Spirit will help you get into the right context. We'll hook you up with the right people. We'll hook you up in the right circles, in the right spaces. Because anybody that's not helping you progress is of the enemy. Anybody that is encouraging you to go against your goals, your ambition, your, your, your things that you want, they are of the enemy. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life. In other words, if he come that he might have life, he going to put people in my world so that I can have life. How you going to be in my world and you ain't ki you, you killing me and not helping me live? You shooting bullets over my vision, shooting bullets over my plan. You speaking against me because you a flat out hater. The devil is a liar. And I'm going to let you form my perspective. You out of your mind. That's like taking financial advice from a broke person. If you broke, you can't give me financial advice. That's like taking credit uh, advice for somebody who got a 500 credit score. If your credit score in the high 700s, I can't talk to you. I don't care what you know. It's the difference between what you know and what you can produce. Yeah. Knowledge puff it up. But you need some production. Am I preaching yet? Am I preaching? You need some. You need. Oh my God! You need some. You need some. You need some production. You, you need some production. And so, uh, uh, might want to straighten it up. The light is gonna tilt over. Uh, Brylin, that's you. Straighten it. Push that up. The switcher. I'm sorry. I'm doing double duty. Back to what I'm saying. Um. Here it is, the reason why we are so jacked up is because we don't recognize demons. Any ideology, anything or idea that has a demonic slant or tint to it, see, see, we can't cast out demons because we live with demons. I it was living inside of us. But we have allowed demons to associate themselves with us. And so now they're camouflaging themselves as angels. And you think that you are in the spirit, but you're really living in the realm of hell on earth. And that's why your life is a product of your living. And that's why your life is full of hell because who you're associated with is full of hell. Man, I'm preaching better than y'all responding. Oh my God. So here it is. God told me to tell you this. Here's what God told me to tell you. In our context, if there's anything in our context that has a demonic slant, we must intentionally exercise that demon. Some conversations are demonic. There are times when the conversations shift to demonic activity. You ought to start rebuking, the, rebuking it right there. But you ain't because you like to hear what they've been saying. Tell me more. Say more. I'm what? What am I? For real? Stop. You kidding me. The devil knows what you like to hear. Because if he feed it to your ear, then it'll translate into your mind. And once it get into your mind, it'll get into your heart. And once it get into your heart, it'll get into your actions. But it all started with the ear. Oh, God. My Jesus. Oh, I feel your presence. Glory be to his name. Somebody shout out product. Let me move on. Somebody shout out, please. So self-aware in terms of perspective, it, it is a product. It's the product, my brothers and sisters, the context in which I assimilate. Then we have uh, perspective. It plays a role. What does our perspective play a role in? Our perspective plays a role, a critical role, in shaping my behavior. 
Oh, I'm finna get her now. Y'all ain't heard nothing yet. Here we go. Uh, the way my attitude is and my point of view is, that's perspective, that, my brothers and sisters, plays a critical role in shaping my behavior and how I act because I act based off how I perceive. Oh, my God. I, I, my actions is a byproduct and it plays a role in what I am perceiving. So what I perceive to be, that's what I am. Boy, if I could run through, I almost tried it up. If I could run through this wall, I could. I would. So here it is. Oh, man. It's, oh, man. Here's the, I'm going to revelation. You can do with it what you want. If I were you, I'll, I'll receive it. But do what you want with it. Here it is. Many times we deem our reckless behavior is just simply acting out of character. So you're reckless. You say, but you're reckless. And we say, well, I'm just, you know, I'm just having character issues. But you're not really acting out of character. You're acting out of perspective. Y'all missed that up here. Y'all missed the revelation. So I don't want you to say you got out of character. No, you are in character because your perspective shapes your character. Your perspective shapes your character. So you ain't acting out of character. You're acting in perspective. Because if your perspective changes, your behavior will follow. Oh, my God. If you see things differently, you will do things differently. Oh, man. You are doing what you see and perceive. And the reason, why, oh, my God. The reason why we're in a position that we are is because our perspective is reckless. You're reckless because your perspective is reckless. And the reason why your perspective is reckless because you have not dealt with it and become self-aware of how you perceive life. you got to do the work. What's the phrase? We are a work in progress, so we must do the work that we make. Progress? Yes. Yes. The work. Mm. So my perspective shapes my character. My character is my behavior. The way you act is who you are. Drugs don't make you act like that. Your character has accepted the fact to you need to, that you're doing drugs. So you don't want to call yourself a drug addict. And so if you don't call yourself what you are, you can't be healed to go to where you need to go. If you depend on alcohol, you are alcoholic, but you got to deal with it so that you can be healed. You no longer a casual drinker. A casual drinker is someone who drinks maybe once or twice a month. If you're drinking every day, you are alky. Somebody shout hallelujah. You know, and, and y'all need to stop this. You know what? I really don't normally do this. Now y'all gonna make me say something I don't want to say. You better say amen because I'm gonna get radical and real up in here in a minute. You, I, you know, that really, I really don't do this. But for this time, I'll make a set. No, that's your perspective. Your perspective is that I relent to something God didn't call me to relent to. And when I allow myself to relent, that's who I am. I'm a person that relent and don't have enough strength to fight the hands of the enemy. Come on up in here. But when your perspective changes, you'll say, I could do it, but it'll lead me to a pathway where I ain't trying to go, so I ain't going to do it. Oh, Oh, my God, my God. Ooh. 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 This, this thing getting good. You know, you know you're preaching when you're preaching to yourself at the same time. I, I got, you know, I got the preacher on the right side, but the, the answer that needs to be delivered said, boy, you, you, you I'm gonna so, so I'm fighting in my head, I tell you, like I'm preaching. But my husband said, that's for you too. Don't act like that ain't for you. See, that's, why, that's the problem. We, don't, we ain't transparent enough. I don't care how saved you are. I can't, get, I can't get you to your healing if you won't be transparent. Transparent really means being open and accepting of where you are so that you can become better. Oh, my God. My God, my God. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just checking my clock. Somebody shout out product. Somebody shout out plays. Let me give you this last one. Uh, possibility. My perspective creates a possibility. It don't only create a product, it don't only play a role, but it creates a possibility. What's the possibility? I appreciate you, uh, Brian, for working both today. My perspective has the possibility of inviting ooh, a false reality. Depending on where you are from a perspective standpoint, it invites a false re reality. Can I tell you this? Uh, your perspective can have you living in a world that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Some of you all are living in la la land, poo poo land, puff puff land. You way out there, you're a space cadet. You cuckoo. And I'm not, I don't mean that in a degrading manner. Have you ever saw somebody who talk like they know everything, but they don't know nothing? I mean, you don't know a boy. You don't know nothing. But all of a sudden, you Albert Einstein, you. I mean, you know somebody, every subject, but don't know nothing about no subjects. You know about sociology, theology, pneumatology, academics, the Holy Ghost, study the Holy Ghost, academics. You don't know nothing. The reason why you don't know anything because you know too much. God did not bless everybody with all knowledge because if he blessed you with all knowledge, then you would be him. He's the only one that's all knowing. And so here it is. You're living in false reality because your perspective has put you in a place that have elevated you in your mind that you're not. When you broke and you ain't got nothing, you got to deal with your brokenness. But we can't deal with our brokenness because we declare the church have taught us to lie. How you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. How's thing going? God been good to me. He's good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And then you leave out here crying and broken. Instead of saying, God, I know you're good, but I don't feel your goodness today. See, you can tell God that, God, I know you're good, but God, I don't feel your goodness. Can you lend me some goodness today? Because everything around me is collapsing and caving, and I want to stay in the faith, but something is pushing me antithetical to what I believe. So God, if you can just touch me real quick, so I won't touch the wrong thing. So I've invited myself into a false reality. And before I can get healed, I got to come back to the place where I am today. And so some of us are broken, wounded, hurt. Phil, I'm ready for you. Broken, wounded, hurt. But we live in a false reality. As I told you, my brothers and sisters, this sermon is to challenge you. But I know that there are many of you all who don't think I preach until I went to the Bible. So the Bible says, I love when I do that. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 16, 13, look what the text says. Now when Jesus came into the district of Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? He's asking them for perspective. And they said, man, some say you Elijah. Some say you John the Baptist. Others say you Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said, okay, now I got a perspective on what they say. He said, but who do you say that I am? Everybody seems to get quiet in the text. But there was one bold brother who said they don't want to answer who you are, so they must think you John the Baptist. They must think that you Elijah. They must think that you Jeremiah. But he said, Peter said, I know who you are. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Y'all missed it up in here. In other words, my brothers and sisters, Jesus.
was doing a perspective check, asking his disciples, what's the word on the street about me? Most of them gave the wrong information, but it was Peter who correctly identified Jesus. And look what Jesus said in verse 17 to Peter. Not blessed are you all. He said, blessed are you. In other words, because you know who I am. I said, because you know who I am. I said, because you know who I am, I'm going to give you some blessings. My brothers and sisters, if you don't get perspective in nothing else, you better have perspective on who the real God is. Is there anybody in here who can say, I know him for myself? Come on, lift your hands up and say, don't nobody have to tell me about my Jesus. I know coronavirus is here, but you ain't got to tell me about my Jesus. Because he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. And the chastisement of my peace are upon him. And by his what? By his what? By his what? We are what? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ought to be praising God in this place. Hallelujah. You need perspective on who God is before God can change your perspective on who you are. So if I don't know God, God can't help me know myself. It was Paul who said, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection and in the presence of his suffering. I want to know who he is. I want to know who my Savior is. And if you're watching me online, I challenge you to lift your hands. If you're in here, stand on your feet and lift your hands. I want to know who he is for myself. Because this life that I'm experiencing now, it cannot be the period in my sentence. It cannot be the exclamation point in my sentence. Yes, that's good, dog. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. And he pity every groan. As long as I live, my troubles rise. I'll hasten to his throne. Yeah. Now, right where you are, we get ready to go, but start telling God, thank you. Yeah. 